I had to drink water to prepare for blood work the next day. Then it turned into a 24 hour water fast. Then all this information on water just fell into my lap. Hi, it's Taisha, and I'm back with another great video. Today we're going to talk about my adventures in water. This started out as a um, overnight fast to prepare for blood work. However, it turned into a 24-hour water fast and it eventually just changed my entire outlook on drinking water and water as a whole. So let's dive right into this. Um, the night that I had to fast for some blood work, I am a girl, I have like small veins. And um, so I noticed that when I drink a lot of water before going into blood work, I do not have to get, uh, don't have to try to get blood like 5,000 times. Getting my blood drawn is my least favorite thing in the world. I had to fast for this appointment. So I was carrying around a gallon of spring water, just drinking it, no breakfast, drinking, 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 drinking. And um, I noticed that while I was at this appointment, I would not have time to go and eat anything. So I just went ahead and continued to drink water. And what I noticed throughout the day was that the cravings I would normally have for food or just eat out of boredom or go eat something that is not too nutritious, it was completely gone. And yes, I was using the bathroom like every couple of minutes, maybe at the most like twice an hour to take the number one. <laughs> and um, I even went grocery shopping and I was able to buy the things that were on my list without putting in any other temptations or junk food, snack food in my cart. I got exactly what I went into the store to get and I got out. When I went to go take a nap because I figured, okay, I'm home now. I really don't have anywhere else to go. I don't want to drive around and be tempted to go through somebody's drive through I decided to go to bed, take a nap. And one thing I noticed while I was taking my nap, I really wasn't sleepy. Like all of a sudden I had this burst of energy to go do stuff, but I decided to just go ahead, you know, stay in bed, just relax, just rest and not burn up too much energy. And it actually worked out quite well. I ended up napping for probably about two to three hours. And when I woke up, I continued trying to finish up all the water. I mean, I was just up and down using the bathroom, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I was really happy. So when, I, when it was time to go and break the fast, I think I broke my fast with some tea and I had some vegetable soup. And the water that I drink at that time, it was the natural spring water. And that water is recommended in a lot of the Dr. Sabi food groups that I am in on Facebook that um, encourages uh, alkaline food, non-hybrid lifestyle. And that water is found um, at grocery stores, either in a gallon or they have a six pack at Dollar Tree. Or if you go to like Kroger's or something like that, sometimes they have it on sale for like 89 cents, something like that. But still, that is the water that is recommended by those who follow the teachings of Dr. Sabi. And coming to that, I'm gonna show you this book here. I found this book somewhere, it was on, on my bookshelf and it's called Alkaline Food Cookbook by Dr. Keith Exum. And he recommends as well, now, when we go to talk about the different types of water, he recommends distilled water only for cooking, purified for drinking with a pH above 8.5, spring water for drinking with a pH above 8.5, and young coconut water, fresh, not packaged. And when we go to talk about a pH, potential hydrogen, and on the scale, when you go from a zero to seven, which seven is neutral, but everything from seven to zero is considered acid. And when you go from seven to 14, that is the alkaline side. And when I became familiar with the, um, the pH scale, it was when I was in um, cosmetology school and we were learning about relaxers, the base and the neutralizers and stuff like that. And come, come to find out, just about everything that we come into contact with has a pH. For instance, blood has a pH that is typically on the alkaline side. However, when you come into like certain foods, 
certain things like potatoes. I know certain beans are not recommended because they're acid producing in the body, which encourages mucus. And it also brings in, it creates an environment where different illnesses and things can thrive. I would have a glass of wine with dinner and wine is typically on the acid side of the pH scale. Now, this is just my own observations. I'm not suggesting that anyone go out and try this or take my word for it, I'm not advising nothing. But one thing I noticed, the more alkaline my body was, to go from eating different alkaline foods and drinking alkaline water throughout the day and the weeks and things like that. And when it came to drinking wine or anything of that nature, it would really have no effect. And I remember um, a couple of years ago, I purchased these pH drops off of um, Amazon. And I was adding that to my water all the time. And I noticed that whenever I would drink with friends or something like that, we go out for a social hour or something, the alcohol would not have an effect on me. And I was like, hmm, on to something here. And like I said, I'm not telling you go out and try this. It's not tried and true. There's no studies behind it. I'm not funding any of that. I'm just telling you what I've noticed with my body. And when it came to craving, not really craving, but I, it was easier to turn away alcoholic beverages because my body craved water. It craved water. And that's when I knew that this change and paying attention to the water that I put into my body was actually doing positive things. I no longer crave sugary drinks because for the longest, I always diluted juices. I would not purchase a juice unless it was 100% juice, not from concentrate or if I was juicing my, my own. And I would um, dilute it with so much water there. When I mentioned it in an earlier video, I think in my video, um, Ways to Get Clear Skin, I showed you where I would have a little bit of juice, but this much water, and that's what I would use, and it helped clear up my skin. Now, you'll come into, I came into some information about the different types of water, as I mentioned, spring, distilled, purified, things like that. And I remember watching a video by, um, it was featuring Annette Larkins, you know, she's in her 70s and she is the raw food vegan who is ageless. And I noticed in her home, her channel link would be up here, in her home she has a distiller and she also collects rainwater outside of her home. She does not drink what comes through the tap. And so when I was researching that further, I came across um, a scholar, the late Mona Harris or Mona Harrison. She'll also be listed in here as well and I'll have her link to her, her lectures in the description box. And she was advising that the majority of the water that is available for us here in the United States is undrinkable. And just rewind back a couple of years in 2014, Toledo, Ohio had the water crisis up there where the runoff from um, farms and agriculture and fertilizers deemed the water that was coming from the lake, you know, undrinkable. It was, it was toxic. It was poison. And then quite recently, we've learned about what has been going on with Flint, Michigan that has been going on. It hasn't changed where their, their water, it, it has lead and it's affecting that entire ecosystem right there and the negative effect that it is having on the people and the residents in that area. And I haven't researched this yet, but um, I heard something floating around about something being something going on with the drinking water in Chicago, Illinois. Someone was telling me that the Brita filters was also made by the Clorox company and all it does is just make your water more palatable. It doesn't make it any less dangerous or anything. So I'm at Kroger's. I want to show you the Brita filters here that I mentioned in my video. This first one here says that it reduces mercury, copper, zinc, chlorine, taste and odor. And then this one here is the Brita Long Last and it said it reduces even more contaminants including 99% of lead. So that's a new, I haven't seen that before. But you use your own due diligence. 
Here is one by Pure that says it removes 99% of lead, 96% of mercury, and 92% of certain pesticides. And one thing I noticed with moving and traveling, you know, a, a, across the globe, I've noticed that different water in different areas, the first sign that something was wrong was that my skin would react horribly. If you notice, you'll have different dry patches on your skin, if your breakouts get bad, or if you notice that your urine has a bad smell, it's just that, think about this. Your skin is the biggest absorbing organ on your body. So jumping into pools with all those chemicals in the swimming pool as well as the germs and the nasty people that get in there and people that put their nasty pets in there, you know, it's like, okay, that really sucks. But then also a lot of when just getting in your shower, what's coming through your tap, it's hitting your skin and you are absorbing it. And also it was said that the water that you absorb through your skin, the, the, the tap water and different chemicals, it hits your bloodstream faster through your skin than it does when you ingest it. And that makes absolute sense because, and it's actually more dangerous because once you take it orally, drink, drink water orally or any kind of chemicals or whatever, you, your body has a natural filtration system. However, coming through your skin, there is not a filtration system and that deems it where you're able to, to, to not control the amount that's being absorbed in your body. But don't come back on, on, um, on topic. Um, I noticed how youthful Annette Larkin's skin is. And I noticed that, you know, she has not aged poorly or her mental health has not declined. So, like her peer group, you know, other people in their 70s. And um, one thing that is personal to me is, you know, um, my grandmother, you know, she's she's suffering from some effects of mental health. And I just can tell you, my grandmother, she was an avid drinker of drinking water out of the kitchen faucet without filtering it. She wasn't really a fan of buying bottled water, you know, kind of like how that generation is, you know, the idea of buying water that should be free. They're not having no parts of it, especially my, my grandmother. And, you know, I'm not saying that solely because of that, but it did give me something to think about. And one thing that I would encourage is that everyone, you know, kind of purchase some kind of reverse osmosis system or some kind of distiller or or even to include a shower head filter and try to filter and you know control the contaminants that is coming through all of the filter I mean all the faucets in your home now we go to this article that I read it caught me when I was in Seattle last week and on the front page of the Seattle Times you'll see Puget Sound fish awash in drugs, let me see, drugs hurting survival, okay? So while we are kind of focusing on, okay, let's worry about the fluoride, the chlorine, because we hear those a lot, we're not paying attention to the drugs that are in our water systems. I know um, somewhere there was a study about the fish or the frogs in the greater DC area, I think they were like really mutated. And all it takes is just certain certain things in your body to cause that 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 cell mutation that just sets your whole body off whack. And in this article, it was written by Linda V. Mapes for the Seattle Times. She's the environmental reporter. She was saying that antidepressants, diabetes drugs, high blood pressure medication continue on down. And you can also see that the research built on earlier work published in 2016 showed juvenile Puget Sound, Chinook, and Pacific staghorn sculpin are packing drugs including Prozac, Advil, Benadryl, Lipitor, among dozens of other drugs present in tainted wastewater discharge. So, the fish, and someone was saying that the first sign that something is going on with nature is that the animals, the fish, 
the plants will start showing signs of it. And then that's when it'll go ignore for a little while until the humans start showing, you know, signs. And that's when we have a catastrophe. And nature is already showing us that something is wrong. Something is not right. And a lecture that I had watched by Dr. Mona Harrison, she had gave that lecture in Washington State where I live. And I would think that, you know, with having the mountains, you know, the snow being the rainiest place that I've ever been, you would think that the water quality was a little better. However, not, you know, with different, you know, um, agricultural plants, industrial zones, just natural waste that's coming away. But now the stuff, the, the drugs that every day you ingest to control your blood pressure, to control your cholesterol, your birth control pills, your antidepressants, your recreational drugs, you, you urinate those out, you flush it down, and it has to go somewhere. And those things are not being you know, treated or they just don't disappear. So it made me realize too, what can I do to my health to make sure that I'm not, not only ingesting toxins, but also putting toxins back out into the environment. And that pushed me even further to continue with, um, with this water challenge to clean up my water. And one thing I noticed that different cravings for certain foods stop. So when you stop craving certain toxic foods, the adverse effects that it has on your body, such as raising up your blood pressure, raising up your cholesterol, or you can't sleep at night because you have insomnia, so you have to go and take some kind of um, pill for that that has these side effects and th things of that nature. And that was really important because also, speaking of diet, I came across this book here, here in, um, in my hometown, I'm, I'm here for a little bit, I came across this book at a thrift store and it's called Diet for a Poison Planet and it's by David Steinman. This book was written, and let's see, this book was written in 1990 and it looks like it had a revision in 2007. And the part that I was reading earlier, this book is so freaking good. Like I said, take your butt to the thrift store. You will find some gems, okay? This book just kind of found me. Like I said, I, I put out those vibes to the universe that I wanted to get better. I wanted to take control of my health. I wanted to be in control of what I put into my, my universe. And different tools come out to you. So if you want to learn more about that, check out my uh, video on the Law of Attraction, okay? Give that video a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, okay? On page 332, he, when I was speaking about the water crisis in Toledo, Ohio, which their water was coming from the Great Lakes, he was saying that 90% of its volume is industrial runoff. Large parts of its riverbed are incapable of supporting any kind of life, and the Great Lakes supply drinking water for up to 30% of the United States. This is in 1990, okay? This is what we're doing to ourselves. Not only have we contaminated the vast number of freshwater fish, not only its pollution destroying forests far and wide through acid rain, but we are also poisoning ourselves slowly and surely by permitting the buildup of toxins and our drinking water supplies. So we already see now from 1990 up into 2014 to 2018 with Flint, Toledo, including, you know, the, the greater Seattle area, okay? So now that we know these things, what can we do about it? What can we do with this information? Now that we know better, we now have to do better. We have to take control over what is coming through our faucets, as I mentioned earlier. Get some kind of filter that removes um, toxins and, and, and different levels of chlorine and fluoride and other drugs. Try to, you know, do reverse osmosis. I know that you guys know that I am a Navy veteran. You know, we had different systems, you know, out, out to sea. We're in the middle of the ocean, but that ocean water is not drinkable. So we had different systems to make our own water on board. And, you know, just also, also think about something else. 
paying attention to how my skin absorbs things. I have made a transition on some of the cosmetics I use. I've also made uh, changes with different toothpaste that I use. I was using a toothpaste that was fluoride free. However, it did contain sodium lauryl sulfate. If you're not familiar with that, make sure you look that up or I'll put a link for you to read more. And it's now made with um, uh, bentonite clay and um, activated charcoal. And I have a video about the benefits of bentonite clay right up there. Make sure you click on it and like and that video. also one thing I started doing was um, I started to take shorter, cooler showers. And I'm also looking at getting different um, filters for my home. I know a tip that was given out was to look for different um, shower head filters that is marked NSF 177 and that removes chlorine. Speaking of chlorine, you'll get confused. Well, we have chlorine, we have chloride, we have Clorox. Well, chlorine is a man-made product. You can find that in, in your cleaning products. And chloride, chloride is bleach and it's found, the chloride is found naturally. Chloride becomes chlorine when it gains an electron and then when it um, combines with the table salt or the salt you throw out to make the chloride is essential for photosynthesis. Yeah. <laughs> but, like I said, go ahead. If the most, the most important thing to put in your body is fresh, water that is not toxic, not contaminated. So do your best to know the difference. Go look into getting your distilled water for cooking, your spring water for drinking, purify for drinking. Um, also, if you want to add some flavor, young coconut juice that is fresh, not packaged. We have that a lot in Hawaii and I love it. You can also find that at international also, marketplaces. You do not have to break the bank and buy bottled water all the time. You really do not. Um, I've had this here. This is my Hydro Flask. I'm pretty sure you saw it in a few of my, my videos. And what it is, it is a vacuum um, ins insulated drinking kit. This one is $40. I'm sorry, this is 40 ounces. And you can interchange the, the top pieces so that you can always have your own cold water. You can purify it at home or have um, infused water and pour it in here and have it with you all day. And then you can also do simple things like add mint to your water. You can add lemon. I'll, um, I'll post some recipes if you want. Take control of the water. When you are using cleaning products such as bleach and different things like that or you are washing dishes and you have other chemicals in there make sure you wear gloves that's why back in the day when we saw you know the housewives and stuff like that they would clean the house they would have on the thick rubber gloves or, or the cleaning gloves put those on if you are going to have your hands submerged because you are absorbing in all of that and also look look into your cleaning products that will not leave such um, a negative footprint in the world, okay? So, yeah, this was much more than just, okay, I'm going to drink a gallon of water and I'm going to show you this video and say, hey, it's so positive. You get clear skin, energy, you're going to lose weight. You know, it's much more than that. It really gives you a moment to just reflect on your existence on this planet and what you can do to prolong it, to help clean up some things and make this world better and also have a positive influence on your family members. You will seem weird, you will, cause a lot of people don't care until it's their time to care, but just be that example that other people can approach and ask questions and be that resource for them, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. I just had so much information I wanted to put out. I didn't want to jump around and give you bits and pieces and not really tell you where to go or what to do. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Let me know if you want me to do that infused water video. Go ahead and leave that comment down below. 
Also, go ahead and check out my other videos as far as being health conscious, such as my wheatgrass video and my most recent upload, which was I made mock chicken nuggets using jackfruit, okay? So, follow me on my other social media platforms, and I will see you later. Don't forget to talk about the health benefits that I did experience while on my water fast and while changing my water habits over the past couple of weeks or even months, I did experience my skin start to get clear. You know, I did have occasional breakouts due to, you know, just being a woman. And also, um, my stomach is flatter. You know, you will, things will flush itself out naturally and your immune system will definitely be stronger and you will definitely have like a decrease in appetite. I am here in my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio. You know that I am a foodie. I love Gold Star, Grippo's, La Rosa's Pizza, White Castles, all that good stuff. I have not really had any of that since I've been here because I like the results I'm seeing and the positive changes in my body as far as cleaning different things up. I'm not craving it and I feel great. And you know, my teeth are still white. That's why I brought it a little closer. <laughs> my teeth are still white um, not using fluoride in my toothpaste just the activated charcoal and um, bentonite clay so these things still will give you what you're looking for and I also use a natural soap I use a Castile soap as well and that's that's pretty much it I'm telling you um, really make this change it brings positive things to your life and as a future goal I'm looking at before I make any big purchases I'm not celebrating holidays so that money saved will be put towards uh, in-house distilling system and I will begin to take control over my own water so I hope that helps you. Make sure you subscribe and leave me some tips if you're doing this help me get better teach me more okay and I'll see you next time.